Hello everyone and welcome to this video which is in our Great Engine Opening Series. I'm Grandmaster Matthew Sadler and after a little break back with videos and really nice one uh, thanks to Chess.com and Andrew Grant, the ethereal programmer who's also a programmer of Torch. Um, I was allowed to have a copy of Torch version 2, new version of Torch and um, yeah, I'm going to be making uh, quite a few videos with it, hopefully. So um, I'm going to be playing a lot of engine games with it. And also I'm going to be looking at its openings. And this is what we're doing in the first two videos. So um, what I always like doing with um, uh, new engines is just to look at, um, you know, what are their um, ideas um, in the initial starting position in lots of common um, human openings. Very often they're quite similar, but there's always uh, you know little interesting little things that might point you to uh, a future direction for, uh, for an interesting line. So um, yeah, that's what we're going to do. And we're starting in this video with 1e4. And 1e4 is Torch's favourite move. Now it won't surprise you to learn that Torch's main line for um, uh, for black is the Berlin. However, interestingly enough, um, interestingly also because uh, of course Jan Nepomniacci uh, in the recent candidates, um, he didn't go for um, this symmetrical line that's um, actually been the favourite of, um, of all the engines uh, as well uh, until recently. Jan played the, um, uh, the Berlin endgame and that's actually what Torch wants as well. And um, well, we get this position, very familiar. And uh, Torch plays uh, knight c3. Now, interestingly enough, um, Vidit played the move um, bishop d7. Um, and here, Torch doesn't actually want Jan's idea of playing uh, g4 and knight h2. Um, if you give Torch a g4, then it will play knight h2. Um, but uh, in this position, Torch actually preferred b3, which is, um, yeah, probably a little bit calmer. I think uh, Jan's uh, choice was excellent against uh, a human player, really quite challenging. Um, actually, what Torch wants is not bishop d7, but bishop e7. And this has been the most uh, common choice of modern engines. Um, it's looking for a quick knight h4, simply exchange off some pieces, free black's position. And um, uh, actually, it was also Alpha Zero's choice against Stockfish Eight. So um, yeah, you do you do really see that uh, that match, um, you know, the uh, the openings that were played in there, they've actually become quite commonplace. Um, well, both in uh, in human elite play and um, and also in um, in engine play. Um, Torch sort of follows the um, um, well-known uh, main line here: H6, Knight F3, Bishop E6. Rook d2, rook d8, takes, takes, and now um, uh, uh, Torch plays the uh, the slightly mysterious novelty. Um, I think g5 was uh, was played until now. Torch likes the move bishop d7 with the idea of regrouping the knight back to e7. It's reasonably common to do that. The knight can come round e7 to g6. Um, uh, by the way, you can't go king e7, which would be very natural because g4 would be rather embarrassing. But um, that is um, uh, the main line for uh, for Torch and uh, 0 0.22 for White um, in the end, you know. So um, yeah, you know, sort of uh, little advantage for uh, for White there. I do wonder whether, whether we're going to see more Berlin in games uh, uh, again because uh, yeah, maybe Jan has uh, stimulated everyone to uh, to have another look at that. Um, otherwise, in the in the Lopez, well, I had a quick look at um, at a few lines here. Um, um, yeah, I had a look at um, at f5, you know, that was played in uh, in Vidit Pragananda again in the candidates, which was quite interesting. So you can have a look at that line there. Um, knight f6 and um, and uh, bishop e7. Uh, this is the the main line, of course. Torch wants um, an uh, an anti uh, marshal now. Wants to play the uh, the line h3. Um, there's a few anti marshals, you know, uh, d3, a4, h3. But um, yeah, h3 played here, and um, well, Torch just follows uh, um, a very long and well known theoretical line here. You know, Black sacrifices that pawn anywhere in the center, gets lost of open lines and the two bishops, and um, just keeps on. Um, keeps on disrupting white before white really gets settled you know and um, well creating weaknesses as well but uh, somehow managing to survive there and uh, this is actually uh, theory um, up to move 25 and now a correspondence game went d5 just giving back the pawn and then uh, trying to get it back 
Um, and uh, Torch's line is rook c6, which is a novelty, but um, it's all leading to equality, basically. So, um, yeah, nothing, um, you know, amazing there, but uh, just uh, pretty standard. Now, uh, I should mention, uh, I'm not sure whether I've mentioned it yet, um, uh, but um, I'm going to show you a selection of lines that uh, I've gone through. But I've gone through loads and loads and loads, and I'm going to put a PGN, uh, make that available to you in the normal play, so you can... Uh, if I don't cover your favourite opening uh, here, then, uh, well, you'll be able to see in the PGM. There's an awful lot that's been uh, covered there. I was intrigued a little bit, actually, about um, the Italian game, and uh, in particular about the, uh, the, um, uh, the Evans Gambit, because that was played in the candidates as well. This game of, I think, Goriachkina was black. I can't remember who was, um, who was white, actually. Was, was it... Uh, to Lagno, I'm not sure, but um, anyway, um, what does um, uh, Torch want? Torch wants the good old fashioned uh, um, Lasker approach where you just play the Queen to d7 to defend the pawn in f7, and then this move Bishop a5 to b6 is quite key. It puts the bishop safe, it was a bit loose on a5, and it also gives white knight a5 to um, fork these two and get the bishop pair. And um, yeah, what uh, Torch wants is, is pretty standard, really. It's just giving back the pawn for a slightly better pawn structure. Why it's still got a little bit of play because the, uh, the black king's uncastled and the queen is, um, is in a little bit of, um, is getting ping-ponged a little bit, but that you know, can be repaired quite easily. And this was, uh, this was Torch's line, and after bishop e3, he wanted rook a8, which is a novelty. Rook f8 was played in a in a correspondence game, not between very strong players, but um, they can use very strong engines, of course. Um, so yeah, I mean, just fine for black. I mean, uh, all right for white, I suppose as well. But uh, nothing uh, nothing amazing. Zero dot zero zero is uh, what uh, Torch says. One thing I, I did wonder about was the the main line of the um, um, of the uh, not knight g5 but uh, d3 bishop c5 the main line of the uh, Italian I mean incredibly complicated so many move orders um, the line that Torch wants early castles and after c3 playing a5 I mean you can play a6 a5 you can castle early not castle early you know so many uh, possibilities. The one thing that interested me there was that um, uh, Torch actually follows a game of um, uh, Karyakin against Tomaszewski, um, where this happened. And uh, here Karyakin took on d4, which is pretty, you know, pretty natural really, um, and uh, Rook e1, uh, eventually uh, lost that game. Um, but um, Torch wants to play just Rook e1, and after takes takes to sacrifice that pawn on uh, on d3 not try and get it back but just just keep you know on uh, pressuring the e5 pawn the the b7 pawn and just keep on going on that looks yeah it looks fairly promising 0 0.23 according to uh, to torch but it might be a little idea worth uh, worth trying that one um it's um yeah you know quite uh, quite a uh, just a, a little a little wrinkle there nothing uh, i mean you not you can't find amazing stuff in the uh, in the uh, Italian game, but um, yeah, not bad at all. I thought that was quite an interesting line. Um, we should also um, uh, look at the Petrov, and I was, I was actually wondering. Um, I mean, I've, I've no idea whether it's true or not, eh, but I, I, I thought it wasn't um, inconceivable that uh, uh, that Naka and uh, Fabi as well maybe would have uh, access to um, uh, to torch during um, um, during the uh, tournament, because after all, uh, you know. Uh, Torch is uh, is um, sponsored by uh, by Chess.com and uh, well both Fabi and uh, and uh, Nak are quite associated with uh, with Chess.com. Um, so interestingly enough, um, D4 that uh, what uh, Nak played against um, against uh, Nepo, D4 is Torch's uh, top move, not Knight C3 as uh, has been uh, the case for uh, for quite a long time uh, with uh, with engines and not uh, Jan's move of uh, Jorn playing the exchange French <laughs> but um, after d4 follow this line um, uh, quite a main line of course eh? so it's not uh, you know it doesn't have to be that uh, that um, uh, that Naka got this from Torch but uh, I did think it was quite uh, quite interesting but um, yeah Torch's main line now is to take on d5 um, c takes d5 knight c3 
and this is actually a line that um, um, that Magnus Carlsen tried against um, uh, Nepomniachtchi in the um, World Championship. Didn't get anywhere. Jan was um, was very well clued up about it. But um, it is an interesting line. It does look a little bit better for White. Uh, Torch just goes um, uh, goes on with this one. Bishop d2, rook b2, and now uh, the novelty g6 rather than king f8, which was played in a in an email game. Quite a high level uh, email game between 2500 and 2600 pretty good at, uh, correspondence yeah just ends up being um, being equal as well actually a uh, torch plays quite an interesting plan here to avoid any breaks with a4 in the future torch just plays uh, a4 here uh, itself and uh, and then just holds like that thought that was pretty interesting um uh, one interesting thing actually is that um, if you do play c5, bishop c7, g3, which is what Naka played against uh, Jan, then um, a5 is also what um, uh, what uh, um, uh, Torch wants um, for black. So yeah, I thought that was quite uh, quite interesting. And uh, yeah, here Naka went knight d2. I seem to remember, I haven't written it down for some reason, but I seem to remember that, uh, that knight h4 was what uh, Torch was looking at mainly, although knight bd2 as uh, Naka played was, uh, was also uh, uh, a possibility. Um, yeah, the only thing that I've got to show you, of course, that's what everyone wants to see, is the, uh, the King's Gambit. And interestingly enough, uh, what Torch wants is something that I saw for the first time um, in, um, in the Leela gauntlet at the TCC, where uh, Leela with Contempt was playing uh, against uh, all sorts of engines. Um, and um, I think Leela played um, the King's Gambit, and uh, I think it was it Minich that played uh, D5. Yeah, I always thought that uh, the G4 was absolutely automatic and had to be played. But D5 was played, and I think that I think it was Bronstein who uh, who played it. There were very few human games with it. Apparently, it's in Nepo's course as well on the uh, King's Gambit. So um, yeah, obviously something that's uh, that's well known uh, with the elite players at least. Um, but um, yeah, it's quite uh, quite interesting somehow. Torch uh, throws in Bishop B5. I'm not quite sure why that is, but I think um, I think the reason was that um, well, if Black goes C6. You can't pressure the d4 pawn anymore with the uh, with a knight, and uh, if you go bishop d7, okay, white loses a tempo here. It's extra development for black, but you're not going to have knight c6 and queen d4 attacking the pawn on d4. I think that was the idea. <coughs> and after h6, torch finds its inner king's gambit uh, player. And to be honest, this this really looks like it could be a position from uh, from the old Estrin books on the king's gambit that I used to uh, to read as a child. Looks very familiar. Um, bishop takes c3 was uh, was the previous human game, but uh, Torch wants king g6. So we get this crazy, crazy uh, sequence. Bishop c7, queen c7, rook f6. The idea is king takes f6, there's knight d5 check for king, king and queen, lovely. So we go back and we carry on, king's gambit style, rook h7, queen g3. <coughs> And um, well, this ends up. Uh, this goes much further. There's a lot more analysis on there, but it ends up as a slightly worse end game for White, which um, is obviously the maximum that you would hope to achieve with a uh, with a King's Gambit. But uh, very interesting line, anyway. And uh, yeah, um, yeah, very little known in, in human play, at least this uh, D5 idea. But it seems to be pretty strong. So let's have a look. What have we got with um, uh, with a Sicilian? Uh, now, don't worry, I've had a look at the uh, the Wing Gambit, the Mora Gambit, the C3 Sicilian. Just take a look at the PGN, um, which will be in the normal place, and uh, you'll see what uh, what happens there. Um, I, I tend to focus on the Nidorf uh, always, see what it is. And uh, interestingly enough, uh, Torch wants to move after a lot of thinking. That's... Um, that was that was uh, one million three hundred thousand million nodes. Uh, so uh, you know, thought for a huge time about it. Um, Bishop d three, the move that I've uh, explained before was uh, thought to be total amateur stuff uh, in the old days. You could really could tell that uh, that a player didn't know his theory if he put the bishop on d three. Um, I've actually had this against uh, Stuart Conquest. Grandmaster Stuart Conquest, who um, is not <laughs> a total amateur, let me hasten to add that, but um, but is very well known for thinking up lots of unusual stuff. Um, so he played Bishop D3 against me and got a decent, uh, you know, a decent game. Of course, it's a perfectly reasonable move. But interesting to see that uh, Komodo Dragon wanted it and uh, and Torch as well. 
And I think that um, Stockfish certainly was uh, was looking at this very seriously as well. Um, the main line is um, E5 Knight E2. That's one of the points. This Knight can come back to E2, round to G3, target F5. And also the Knight can, um, after F4 and takes, it can take on F4 and uh, target the Bishop on E6 and also clamp down on D5. I mean, it's not huge, but it's, um, it's quite decent. And uh, here, Torch's novelty was Knight C E2 here. I thought was quite nice you know the uh, the bishop can retreat to c3 if he gets hit so staying on that um on that long diagonal there and um the knight can come round to g3 into f5 or h5 thought that was quite uh, quite interesting line actually so um yeah you know well worth um looking at that um one interesting thing um uh, that i that i thought was that um I tried rook g1 um, because that was um, Fabiano's choice against uh, Ali Reza in the um, in the candidates. I was intrigued to notice that um, um, what Torch actually wanted here. Um, actually, I mean, rook g1. I, I first uh, encountered this. I think I was one of the first sort of top level encounters uh, in this line because again, Stuart Conquest. Um, you know, he um, was always thinking up uh, weird ideas at the board and he came up with this British Championship 96 or 97, I think. And uh, I do remember very much that I was thinking I'd love to play Rook G8. I would so love to play Rook G8 <laughs> to meet uh, G4 with G5. And I was really going to do it. Uh, in the end, my professionalism uh, took root and I came up with H6 to again go G4, G5. H6 is a very reasonable uh, idea in actual fact. Um, but um, uh, Torch wants b5, and now actually in this position, uh, Torch wants the novelty knight d5. Um, that's why I was sort of wondering whether whether Fabi uh, had uh, you know sort of consulted uh, Torch on this to uh, you know to uh, to give him some uh, some fresh ideas. Um, the the nice thing as well is that the the main line uh, Torch's main line is absolutely bananas, just uh, stuff being uh, you know just being hit on both sides. You know so black. Just destroying the king side, white um, uh, playing on the queen side here, and um, the rooks swinging over. Look at those two rooks on a3, b4, whilst black's attacking the first rank, and it ends up as a, of course, as a <laughs> king d2, whatever, as a draw by repetition here. Just, uh, but it's just really weird, you know, with both sides uh, just invading on the flanks and just ignoring each other completely. And uh, well, this was a, a draw by repetition. Knight e1, uh, knight f3, knight e1, knight f3. So um, I think actually um, it's true, isn't it? I think oh no, king e two, rook e one is made. I was hoping for a nice little pattern with king e two, knight g one, but yeah, rook e one is made. So loads more lines in the Nidorf uh, there for you uh, to look at in the PGN, but um, that was the stuff that sort of uh, appealed to me, you know, with the candidates fresh in my mind. Um, let's have a look. We'll have a look at a couple, two more lines. The French, first of all always interesting to see what the French uh, is slightly um, sidestep move order from um, from torch there but we head back into into the main line and uh, yeah I mean torch's main line is simply the line the main line that's that's common for an awful lot of engines um, I mean the TCC ran at some sort of um, a tournament where uh, um, actually weaker engines took on the stronger engines stockfish and Leela um, from the starting position and you saw that a number of engines actually wanted this French line and uh, yeah it's really known as sort of um, a, a drawing line although you know it's one of those things that uh, you know theories progressed uh, so far and uh, well you're currently at a point you know it's all theory this uh, you're currently at a point to be honest where I sort of think well would I really fancy this as black maybe it's okay if you're going to make a draw against a very strong player but um, um, it's a huge amount of theory to learn in order to get to an ending a pawn down, you know. So, um, yeah, I don't know. Um, bishop takes d4 is an old game, um, Kamsky against Shimano, which uh, Gata won, 2013. But um, king e7 is uh, Torch's novelty, and Torch thinks that uh, this is just going to end up a draw. I mean, black sacks two pawns, but uh, gets plenty of activity. Eventually wins the a2 pawn, and, you know, rook and four versus rook and three, and... Uh, you can uh, change some pawns uh, more with f6 as well and you'll, you'll make your draw but um, not amazingly you know amazingly lovely tempting prospect for white but yeah that's um, that's basically what um, Torch wants uh, from the uh, from the white side as uh, against the French um, 
you've also got the winner of course um, one interesting thing there is that um, a torch goes through the Alpha Zero line which is uh, H4 um, so not the um, the Queen G4 line which is uh, very sharp there um, but H4 and uh, yeah I mean the idea is you can get the Rook active defend the Queen side and also attack the pawn on G7 through H3 to G3 and this H pawn is heading to H6 to try and soften up the, the black dark squares uh, on the king side, you know, since the uh, since blacks uh, exchanged off the dark squared bishops. And uh, well, Torch's main line is pretty um, pretty nice, really. H5, bishop e2, and then king f1 with uh, artificial castling there. Quite a tough uh, French position, but a slight edge for uh, for white. And uh, yeah, you know, I always find these lines much more playable than the queen g4 lines, which are just impossible to remember. But I've given you Torch's recommendation in those Queen G4 lines as well. Um, let's have a look. Finally, so many Karakhan fans on Twitter. What does Torch want against the Karakhan? Well, E5 is what uh, Torch wants. A lot of engines want that. And um, after Bishop F5, which is Torch's main line, um, actually um, thought for a very long time, uh, 800,000 million nodes. Um, and came up with knight d2, which funnily enough was also a line that uh, Leela with Contempt was quite keen on. Um, so um, yeah, the idea is that after e6 you go knight b3 and you know black can play a quick c5, um, but um, but yeah, then um, you know black gets the um, uh, the bishop pair if you do it uh, in this particular way, and otherwise you're just sort of slowing down c5 and just putting the knight on a, on a decent square. And uh, queen c7, knight f3, bishop e2, c5, c3. And uh, you know, if c takes d4, you can uh, even take back with a knight there and hit the bishop on f5. It's um, a little bit of, a, of an edge for uh, for white, you know, um, nothing um, huge, but also, um, yeah, just a, a very simple line. So, yeah, you know, might be worth uh, looking at because it seems like a number of engines are quite keen on it. Um, the other line is c5, which used to be a side line. Uh, Botvinnik famously played it against Tal in their World Championship uh, uh, match. I think it was a return match in uh, 1961, which uh, Botvinnik won. Um, it's known as the Henkin Arkel uh, line in uh, in the UK uh, after the uh, Israeli player Igor Henkin and uh, uh, Keith Arkel, in English grandmaster, who's played it for donkey's years. Um, Interestingly enough, um, a Torch plays one of the lines that Alpha Zero again um, uh, played. Um, Alpha Zero actually played loads and loads of lines against that. I think it's on our on our Game Changer channel. We did uh, quite a few videos, Natasha and uh, and myself, on uh, on all that. Uh, the one interesting thing is that after A5 from uh, from Torch, looking to play uh, Bishop A6. Um, I think that um, Alpha Zero tends to play Queen E2, Knight D2 to F3, C3 lines. Um, uh, Torch plays the move c4 and then afterwards wants to uh, take on c4 and play this end game. Gives it, um, it's quite a, an interesting little idea that, uh, that Torch plays b3 and then bishop b5. Quite a nice little uh, consolation there on the queen side. 0.33 for white according to Torch, so um, a definite edge, but, um, but you know, holdable for black, of course. But um, yeah quite interesting to see what uh, what Torch recommends there and in particular this line against uh, three bishop f5 knight d2 I think this could become uh, yeah be a, a very I think a very easy line for white players to play and uh, presumably you know got a little bit of extra danger than you might expect so there we are um, that's going to be my uh, my little lightning tour of uh, Torch's 1e4 repertoire 1e4 also being Torch's um, uh, main line um, yeah, you know, there's a PGN out there uh, in the normal place, so do take a look. If I haven't covered your favourite line, there's uh, a lot, lot more in that PGN. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, otherwise, uh, you know, I hope you enjoyed this uh, this little walkthrough. Next video is going to be all about 1D4. If you like the video, why not give a like, subscribe to the channel, take a look at my new books, uh, Silicon Road to Chess Improvement, as mentioned by, by Magnus during the candidate stream and uh, re-engineering the chess classics, which is the latest one. Um, but otherwise, you know, thanks very much for watching and hope to see you at the next video. Thanks for watching.